Good afternoon, Messiah kids. I have a question for you. <clears throat> Do you have brothers or sisters or cousins? Well, okay. I think almost everybody has at least some of those. Um, do you ever get in a fight with them? Like um, maybe the you were building some fancy Lego thing and a younger brother or sister came in and just whacked, knocked it down and that made you mad. <clears throat> or um, maybe you were outside playing and you wanted to go on the swing and your cousin or sibling just stayed on the swing forever just to spite you. Well, that happens sometimes. And I have a story from the Bible about some brothers and they were so mean to their youngest brother so mean. So let's find out about this. Um, this story is in Genesis third chapters 37 through 46. So it's a long story, but we have a short version. And you might know this story, especially if you went to one of Messiah's musicals two or three years ago. Jacob had 12 sons, but of all of his sons, Joseph was his favorite. One day, Jacob gave Joseph a splendid new robe. It was beautiful and rich with all the colors of the rainbow, but it made Joseph's brothers jealous. They wanted rich rainbow ropes, too. And that's understandable. I think that's fair. But what happens next isn't fair. Then, to make matters worse, Joseph kept on having these special dreams. I dreamed I was the greatest. I was king. Joseph told his brothers, and you all bowed down to me. <clears throat> now, I'm sure you know, even if Joseph didn't, that telling your brothers things like that isn't a very good idea. Joseph's brothers hated him even more. They wanted to kill Joseph and his dreams. It's not very good. And one day, that's exactly what they tried to do. They tore Joseph's rainbow robe off him and sold him to slave traders for 20 pieces of silver. The traders took Joseph to Egypt and made him into a slave. The brothers went home and lied to their father, telling him that Joseph was dead. That's the end of the dreamer, they thought, but they were wrong. God had a magnificent dream for Joseph's life, and even when it looked like everything had gone wrong, God would use it all to help make the dream come true. God would use everything that was happening to Joseph to do something good. <clears throat> Meanwhile, while things were not looking good for Joseph in Egypt, he was far from home and from his dad. Then he got blamed for something he didn't do. And even though he had done nothing wrong, he was punished and thrown in jail. But God was with Joseph. Oh, there's a picture. Sorry about that. So that's our friend Joseph in jail. This is when he was being led off by the slave traders. One night, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had a scary dream about thin cows gobbling up fat cows. 
What on earth did it mean? He didn't know, but Joseph was a dream expert. So Pharaoh sent for him. It means a famine is coming, Joseph explained. There won't be enough food. Pharaoh was so pleased by Joseph's skill that he immediately took Joseph out of jail and made him a prince. <clears throat> now back home, Joseph's brothers had run out of food and everyone was hungry. God's special family was in danger. If they didn't get food soon, they would starve to death. So Joseph's brothers traveled to Egypt to buy food. They came and knelt before the new prince. His brothers didn't know that the prince was Joseph, but Joseph knew who they were. Joseph's dream, the one about his brothers bowing down to him, was coming true. It's me, Joseph cried. When they saw it was Joseph, his brothers were afraid. They had wronged Joseph. They had sinned and they knew it. Now Joseph would certainly punish them. But Joseph looked at his brothers and his eyes filled with tears. Even though his brothers had hurt him and hated him and wanted him dead, in spite of everything, he couldn't stop loving them. So here's Pharaoh's dream over here. And here's when Joseph's brothers came and had to bow down to the new prince. His heart, which they had broken, filled up with love, and Joseph forgave them. Joseph threw his arms around them. Don't be afraid, he said. Behind what you were doing, underneath everything that was happening, God was doing something good. God was making everything right again. Joseph didn't punish them. He rescued them. He brought God's special family to live safely with him in Egypt. One day, God would send another prince, a young prince whose heart would break. Like Joseph, he would leave his home and his father. His brothers would hate him and want him dead. He would be sold for pieces of silver. He would be punished even though he had done nothing wrong. But God would use everything that happened to this young prince, even the bad things, to do something good, to forgive the sins of the world. So there Joseph is, hugging his brothers and telling them he forgives them. And so when the story said one day God would send another prince, a young prince whose heart would break, you know that was Jesus. Because Jesus, one of his names is Prince of Peace. And he was sold for pieces of silver by Judas. So... Even though brothers, sisters, cousins, friends, even though sometimes they might do mean things to you, underneath, if you are family or like family, you usually can find it in your heart to forgive them. Even if they like took your favorite video or your favorite uh your favorite game um you can always find a way to forgive them because they're your family and you will always love them and just like jesus he for he came to forgive all of us 
So I did something new. I think we have done this a long time ago. Um, but I did, because I thought of Joseph's coat and it's all about color. So I wanted to do something that was all about color. So I have um, a, I don't know, I call it a marble box. So this is my box. And inside it are marbles. There we go. And so what I did for our craft project today is I took a plain white piece of paper and I put it in the box and I put, I squeezed some paint in there and then I let the marbles do the work. So I would shake, 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 shake all around and then I'd open it up and that's always fun, open it up. Oh, that looks pretty, but I bet we could do better. So then I close the lid and I shake, shake, shake some more. And when I pulled out my piece of paper, this is what it looked like. It's kind of like splash art or spin art. So I started out with the square piece of paper. And then I cut out the shape of the coat after the paper had died, had dried. So, um, so I figured this coat could remind you that Joseph forgave his brothers and he was a prince and that another prince, Jesus, comes to forgive all of our sins and all the things we do wrong. So I hope you can do that. Um, you can use marbles in your, in your box. You can use beads. That's what I use are round beads. So um, it's really fun to do and you can shake it as much as you want and you could choose just certain colors. But for Joseph's coat, I chose all the colors I had. So, um, let's see. I will be back with you on Wednesday with another Bible story. And um, I just want to remind you that a week from Wednesday, there's going to be a concert out in the parking lot at Messiah Church at 6 30 and there's going to be a barbecue food truck that comes at six o'clock so that sounds like a really fun evening good chance to picnic in the parking lot and i hope to see you there i hope to see you all back here on wednesday so let's bow our heads in prayer dear god we are thankful that you sent your son jesus he forgives our sins, and he teaches us that we should forgive those that sin against us, that do mean things, that do naughty things, um, and especially to forgive our family and our close friends. And um, I just pray that you will be with us on this day. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. I will see you on Wednesday. Thanks for joining me.